Everywhere you go, there's trouble. There's trouble. Everywhere you go, there is strife. Everywhere you go, there's something that worries you. Remember. Everywhere you go. There's trouble. Everywhere you go, there is strife. Everywhere you go, there's something that worries you. Remember. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. God is standing by. Jesus, he'll be right there. Don't you know he will roll dark clouds away? He'll hear you when you pray. He'll hear you when you call. He'll catch you before you fall. Jesus will be your friend right down to the end. Just remember. Jesus, he'll be right there, yes he will 
Don't you know he will roll dark clouds away? Yeah. He'll hear you when you pray. Oh, yeah. He'll hear you when you call. Yeah. He'll catch you before you fall. Jesus will be your friend yeah. right down to the end. Just remember. I said, everywhere you go, there's trouble. Everywhere you go, there is strife. And everywhere you go, there's something that worries you. Yeah, remember. Don't you know he will roll dark clouds away? He'll hear you when you pray. He'll hear you when you call. He'll catch you before you fall. Jesus, be your friend right down to the end. Just remember. No need to feel No need to worry yeah. Michael is standing by
You raise me, you save me, you bless me, you kept me. Oh, 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 Jesus, that's no. You save me, you praise me, you kept me, you bless me. That's why I love him. Because I know there's nobody else like him. I, I don't know about you, but I, I search all over. And I can't find nobody. Nobody like Jesus. See, that's why I don't know about you, but he word on my praise. We get it. He allowed me to come here this morning. Come on, anybody else worthy? Anybody else know he's worthy of your praise this morning? Come on, you can give him a praise this morning. Come on, it might be your last time. So you need to praise him right now. He woke you up this morning. He watched over you last night. He's worthy, I tell you. He's worthy. No one like him. Oh, oh. I, I'm trying to, no one like him. This thing I bought you from 2015 to 26, there's nobody else like him. All the mess you went through, all the hell you've been through, nobody else like him. Oh yeah, come on, come on. Yes, yes, yes. I, I know about you, but I had to get my praise out this morning. Because see, I know we might be my last time, so, so I had to get it out right now. Yes, Lord. Oh yeah. Oh yes, oh yes, I tell you. He's worthy, church, he's worthy. He's so worthy, I tell you. Ooh. Lord, I'm trying to get to it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. No one, no one, no one. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for moving. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Have your way right now. Thank you, Lord. No one like you, Lord. Lord, no have mercy. One. Yes, Lord. No one. No one. No one. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. It, it, it's time for giving right now. It, it's time for giving. Can we all stand? Can we all stand? And get your program out there. The celebration of giving. Listen. Because he done so much for us. Still doing it, somebody said. Yes, Lord. Amen. All right, church. So why do we give? Why do we give? Why 
why do we give? Why do we give? Thank you, Lord, for all. Thank you, Lord, for the purity of giving. We are excited about paying the tithes and giving the offering. We know that you are faithful to your promise. Therefore, we trust you in the faith to do what you have said. Amen. Amen. Now is the hand of the usher. everyone have a chance to give amen can we all stand we're going to see our doxology praise God from whom all blessings praise him praise him all creatures give me praise him praise father and holy God. Amen. Amen. Okay. All right. Let the church say amen. amen. What a beautiful worship experience we have had this morning already. Amen. As we stand to give pastoral emphasis 
uh, next Sunday is New Members Sunday. All right, let me say that again. Next Sunday is New Members Sunday as we, the Mount Calvary, celebrate all of the new members that was added to our church family from January 2015 to January of 2016. Amen? Amen. And on next Sunday, we're asking all of our leaders of our various ministries and all of our deacons and deaconesses uh, immediately after service with all of our new members will be over in the fellowship hall and we'll be doing a little welcoming celebration as well as informing them of our various ministries that we have here in our church amen, amen. so we look forward to you coming and then on the fifth Sunday of this month we have slated that it would be the Sunday that we will make an extra effort give towards the Family Life Center. Amen? Amen. And uh, we certainly do need that Family Life Center uh, that will be able to receive and hold the various things that we have. The Lord is growing Mount Calvary. Amen. He is growing Mount Calvary in a marvelous way. And it's good when you have to expand. Some of you know what it's like to live in a house and as your family grow, you have to add on. Amen. My aunt had a house like that. She, her house grew so. She only had one child, but uh, she had a whole lot of foster children or adopted children. And she, I think she had over a thousand children that come through her house. She was recognized, I think, uh, by, I forget what magazine it was, but she had it. But she added this way, that way, and yonder way, and all kind of ways to her house. So we, we're, going to, we're going to need to expand so that we can accommodate the needs of our church family. And we need you, Mount Calvary, to be the ones that will sacrificially give. Amen? So I trust that you would do that. If you would give, uh, I've already collected $100 from one member already. I asked for 20 and she gave 100 and I'm wondering if that spirit is going to fall on somebody else. It would be good if that spirit would just fall on you to give. Now, but don't let that be for the whole year. Amen. But try to do the very best that you can. Uh, on Friday night, we had a marvelous time, a glorious time, invited to Sister Maskell's house as the prison ministry, the women's prison ministry, had a fellowship, and we had a glorious time at her home and just sharing with the ladies who go to the prison and giving that testimony of what it's like to go into the prison uh, when those doors go clean. Amen. It's serious. Amen. But then after they get in, they said that they went in there to minister to the ladies, and the ladies end up really being a blessing to them. Amen? Because they feel so welcome and so accepting. Those women want to hear a word from the Lord. Amen? And you know, everybody likes to cook when somebody likes what you're cooking. Amen? <laughs> And so we, we're thanking God for that ministry and thank God for our leader, uh, Brother Donald Charles, who give leadership to both men's ministry in prison and women's ministry. And he spoke on, on last night, on Friday night, and he really just has a passion for that ministry. Thank you, Deacon Charles, for what God is allowing you to do. Now also, I thank God for uh, this Friday as well. Uh, the Martin Luther King, I asked as many of you who can to come over to that service. How many of you were there? Just raise your hand if you were there. Amen. God bless you. We thank you so much for going and being there because our very own son. Amen. I'm going to call it official today. Dr. Mario Garner. Did he speak, y'all? Amen. God bless him. And our son is here today. Stand Mario let's celebrate him and thank God for the man that he is we watched him grow we watched him develop and now we're watching him soar as the Lord leads him he is the CEO and that stands for chief executive officer amen of Herman Memorial Hospital in Pearland 
in Paraland, Texas. Amen. So he's in charge of that and doing a marvelous job. He was over a CEO down in New Orleans as well, where he got his first start, I believe, as a CEO, I'm sure. But he, we just are excited about what God is going to do. He's a true testament of the dream that Dr. Martin Luther King had. Amen. And I trust God that all of our young people who are sitting throughout this sanctuary in the house floor and the balcony as well, that you would look to this young man and say, if he can do it, you can do it too. Amen. And his message was just stay focused. Because if you lose your focus now, amen, you won't be all that you can be. And we salute you, Mario, for just a wonderful job that you've done. And you make the Ghana name proud. Amen. Yeah. Sister Gwen. Amen. Sister Gwen, he makes the Ghana name look proud. Where are Eugene at today? Amen. Make the Ghana name look good, boy. I'm so glad I got that name, I tell you. <laughs> Amen. Thank you so very much uh, for blessing in such a special way. Uh, Kenya Afford is still asking and soliciting that we keep her in prayer as she uh, her and her daughter is in hospital up in Shreveport. Let's keep her in prayer that God will continue to bless her. As also our uh, sister Josie, uh, Josie Darborn uh, had a little light stroke and uh, we want to keep her in prayer as well. Would you join me in just a moment of just silent prayer? And pray for that person whom you know that's going through a season of struggle. Amen. Just bow your heads in a word of prayer. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Would you stand with us for our church covenant as Reverend uh, Minister? Um, Stanley Shelton will come and lead us in our church covenant. I thank God for all of these preachers the Lord have us with. Any new members, amen. Sister Robinson is coming. Amen. Brother Robinson is coming. Any new members recently joined have not yet received the right hand of fellowship. Amen. God bless you. We thank you so very much. Let's receive Reverend Stanley as he comes and read to us our church covenant. All right, we ready? Having been led, as we believe, by the Spirit of God, to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, we do now. In the presence of God, presence of God. Angels, angels, and this assembly, and this assembly. most solemnly, most solemnly joyfully, joyfully, enter into this covenant, into this covenant. With, one with one another as one body in Christ. Body in Christ. We, engage, we engage, therefore, therefore by, the aid of, by the aid of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit to, walk together, to walk together in Christian love, in Christian love to strive for the advancement of this church. In knowledge, holiness, and comfort to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship, ordinance, disciplines, and doctrines, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expense of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotions, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances to walk circumspect in the world to be just in our dealings 
faithful in our engagements and exemplary in our deportments to avoid all tattling, backbiting, and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale and the use of intoxicating drinks as a beverage, and to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy in feeling and courteous in speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay. We moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we will, as soon as possible, unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. Amen, amen, amen. amen. As you are standing, uh, we want to welcome our new members uh, to this church family. Certainly, I do appreciate, again, to say to you, welcome to Mount Calvary. This is your home church. This is your church family. I'm your pastor. These are your members. We're all family. We're all one. And we're going to strive to love you with the love of God. Amen? Amen. Now that we're family, family ought to be on speaking terms. Amen? Amen. And since we're family, everyone except those new members, we want you to find somebody that you don't know, or even if you know them anyway, just shake hands with them, show them some love. As the pastor and the deacons and ministers, we give the right hand of fellowship to our new members. Jesus Christ, sign me up, of the Christian, all right my day, on the road, I've been changed, since the Lord, oh, oh, to be. Ready when Jesus comes Sign me up For the Christian Jubilee Write my name Write my name On that road Don't get wrong the Lord the Lord has blessed me On that road, oh, I'm in chain. Since the Lord ripped me, I wanna be 
Just for the choir, give us their last selection. Uh, today, we want to go and look at Psalms 34, 1, 2, and 3. As you notice, our theme, uh, putting God first in 2016 through fellowship, stewardship, and worship. And uh, we've been talking about worshiping through prayer. And we'll talk about worshiping through struggle on last Sunday, even with them thorns. You got to worship God, amen? So this Sunday from Psalms 34, I want to tell you, you got to keep on worshiping him and don't let nobody stop you. Amen. Don't let nothing and nobody dictate how you're going to praise the Lord. Your praise of God, your worship of God ought not be predicted or, de uh, or determined by how you feel nor about what's going on in your life. And we want to look at the life of David and try to share with you that three points that we want to share. Uh, let me, while I'm standing, thank you for yesterday, members who were here to celebrate uh, the life of Manuela Fredu. And our prayers are continuously with Monica and Faye uh, as they have now laid to rest uh, father, mother, and now a sister. Amen. And our prayers are with them as they're going through. Tomorrow is Martin Luther King's day. It's not just a day off, but it's a day on. And there's the Martin Luther King parade. And it would be nice if we would all go and look at the floats. Amen. If you're not in the parade, at least go look. Amen. <laughs> go look because so much was given and so much sacrifice was given by not only him but a whole mantra of other civil rights leaders that we would have the right to go and vote and uh, if you have watched and observed the news media uh, I don't think we all feel Trumpish today do we <laughs> uh, we don't feel Trumpish we don't feel like Cruz either do we Amen. And we're, we're thinking on Hillary and, and uh, what is his name, Sanders, those two Democratic candidates. Uh, we need to really seriously take a look at that. And our civil, uh, uh, that's it, you know the name of it, Social Justice Commission person, Sister uh, Gwen Garner and others will be talking to us. But this year is an election year. Amen. November uh, this year we'll be electing uh, president and we need to make sure that we exercise our right to vote. All right, choir going to come and I'll hush and we're going to have a little church.
this. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. With all of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O Lord. Let's say that again. I will bless thee, O Lord. O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. Oh, yeah. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. With the hand of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O Lord. Let's say that again. I will bless thee, O Lord. Bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O oh Lord, with a heart of thanksgiving. I will bless thee. Oh yes, I love it, I love it. With my hands lifted up. And, uh, and my mouth filled with bread. Oh help me. With a heart of thanksgiving. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. One more time, with my hands lifted up. Lifted up and my heart filled with rain. With the heart of thanksgiving, O oh God, I will bless thee, O oh Lord. The 34th number of Psalms. David says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Now, you know, when you want to bless the Lord, you like to have a little help. <laughs> when you're praising the Lord and he says oh magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together the grass will the flower fade but the word of our God shall stand forever I want to label this text this morning don't let nothing and nobody dictate your praise don't let nothing and nobody dictate your praise I am thankful to God as we try to share the first Sunday in January that we have got to pray we got to continue to pray as the Lord Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane and he prayed and he prayed the same prayer over and over again until he got to that place where he was strong enough to say not my will but thy will be done and on last Sunday we tried to tell you that uh, you got to put up with some thorns and these old thorns they just prick us amen but we got to keep on pressing on and knowing that God's grace it is sufficient I thank God for his grace being so sufficient his grace keeps me because I cannot keep myself. I wish you knew something about God's grace. God's grace is, is an amazing grace. Given to me what I really don't deserve. I don't deserve it. He don't owe it to me. But he give it to me anyway. If 
you were a Sunday school student this morning, you would have already learned that God is a good God. Amen. It takes a man to do what Jose did. To be able to love a wife that is unfaithful. He was a prophet, but he was a husband first. And being a husband, he had to go and marry a woman who was not only a whore herself, but her whole family was full of whoredom. Oh, y'all ain't gonna help me preach this morning. And he, he did what a husband was supposed to do. He loved her. He provided for her. He protected her. And that wasn't enough for her. She needed somebody else. Boy, y'all ought not look at me like that. Make me think you're guilty. She, they, 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 she, didn't, she didn't treat him right. She didn't treat him right. And because of all of that, she had only one child that was his. We think Jezreel <laughs> and Loramai and Loami. God says, Loramai, he says, now what I'm going to do now, I'm going to wipe y'all out. Amen. Jezreel, I'm going to scatter you, but Loramai, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wipe y'all out because you, you, you messed up. You're not faithful. And the Lord am I, God said, I'm through with y'all. I want nothing else to do with you. Can you imagine telling your children, I'm through with you? I don't want nothing else to do with you. God says, I'm through. But thank God for verse 10 and verse 11. God is in the restoring business. And not only that, he did it through Jesus Christ. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus came, born of a virgin, amen, went to Calvary, bled, suffered, and died, restored the nation back together, and brought us to along with it, both Jews and Gentiles. Y'all don't even know grace. I'm trying to tell you about grace, and you're looking at me funny trying to figure out where I'm going, but I'm just trying to tell you about God's grace. We don't deserve it, but he does it anyway. So we can't let nothing, nobody dictate how we're going to praise the Lord. And in this text this morning, David is uh, the psalmist. David, you understand historically, looking back, he was on the run from King Saul. Saul wanted to take his life. Saul had it in for David. He didn't like David because David had killed Goliath. And the people of Israel was praising David more than they were praising King Saul. You know what they said, don't you? They said it like this, Saul have killed his thousands, but David have killed his 10,000. Maybe he wouldn't have been so mad if it was the men that were singing it, but it was the sisters. I wish y'all wanted to help me preach. It was the sisters that was, was giving David praise. And every man wants a little pat on the back. Wished I had the church here. I, I thought it was Sunday morning, but I see it's not Sunday morning. I, every man wants a little praise every now and then. Uh, let me say it another way. Sisters, if you got a, a pretty decent man, by that I mean he will work. He 
He ain't sitting there with the remote in his hand playing PlayStation and Sega Genesis and all that other stuff and not flip it from ESPN to NBC Sports. <laughs> but he does have a job and keep a job and will go to work. And if he treats you decently enough, amen, you ought to show some kind of appreciation. Like cooking. <laughs> Brothers, y'all ought to be helping me preach. I'm trying to help y'all out. Like cooking, cleaning, and taking care of a few other needs. I'm trying to put it as nice as I can. Amen. Man, 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 have needs. And man, in the house. All right. You ought to do us halfway right. You won't have to go looking nowhere else. Saul was jealous of David. And because of this jealousy, Saul no longer appreciated the music that David made for him during his season of depression. Do I have a witness in here? And everybody will have a season of depression. You'll have a season where your spirit is just troubled. And, and Saul would often call for David, and David would often play on his harp. And his music, Sister Trevelyan, would sort of soothe his spirit. So much so he would calm, but now there's a new musical instrument being played in the nation. And it's the, the voice coming from the sisters praising David. So now David is hated by King Saul. Find himself running and hiding from Saul. Now logically David should have been afraid and terrified uh, when he found himself in this condition. Uh, but somehow, David would not allow his spirit to be discouraged. Do I have a witness in here? You know what he did? He, he went on the run and David ran from Saul and I, I hadn't yet figured this out. Why he ran to the enemy's camp? After he left from the priest, and he ran from Saul and ran right to Achish. Went right to Abimelech, which is really the name or title, uh, like a pharaoh or whatever, but Achish. He went to Kish, who was the king of the people of the Gats, who was the family of the people of uh, Goliath, whom David had slew and cut off his head. Why would he run into the enemy's camp? Can I help you out? There's a song that they sing. I hadn't heard this choir yet singing. I hope y'all don't sing it. I'm going in the enemy's camp. And I'm going to take back everything the devil and stole from me. No. <laughs> Lord ain't never told him nothing about going in no devil's camp. He said, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Can I tell you, you ain't no match for Satan? Do I have a witness in here? But he goes into the enemy's camp and he was recognized by the people of Gath. And is not this 
David? Is not this the king of Israel? Is not this the one that, have, that they're singing about? David has killed Saul has killed his thousand but David has ten the thousand and when David recognized he was recognized he knew what some of us do he played crazy I think I can help you now everybody that's crazy ain't really crazy they just playing crazy Look at your neighbor and say, I knew something was wrong with you. <laughs> I knew it. I knew all the time you were. I knew you were better than that. <laughs> Amen. Trying to play special. When you know, you, you know what you're doing. A lot of us like to talk about it. I didn't know what I was doing. You knew what you were doing all right. You're just trying to play crazy. And trying to play me crazy. Do I have a witness? He played crazy. He, he played crazy, Floyd. What he did was, it, it, when he found out he was recognized, he started banging his head against the wall. Then he started drooling at the mouth where saliva was coming all in his beard and tongue hanging out. I mean, he, was, he, he had to look grotesque. And, and Akish looked at him and said, uh, I wish I could say it like I want him. But he said, this Negro crazy. <laughs> he looked at him and said, he, go, he lost his mind. And, and, and he said, I like Akish, I like him. Akish said, I got enough crazy people. Anybody got enough crazy people in your life? You don't need no more craziness in your life. You got enough craziness in your life. You, you, you living with crazy. You, you working with crazy. And sometimes you riding with crazy. So much so until you think you crazy sometimes. I wish I had somebody want to be real in here today. I'm tired of crazy. Tired of crazy. It's a crazy world we living in. This world is messed up that we're living in. It's, it's crazy everywhere. There's something that's going on in this world I don't understand. I, I don't understand how some folk do some stuff. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. It, 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 it baffles me how these folk can do some stuff. Do I have a witness? But I'm glad to report to you today that the word says thou will keep him in perfect peace you want to handle the crazy that's in your life keep your mind on the Lord Jesus wish I had a good voice this morning I said keep your mind on Jesus and the more you keep your mind stayed on Jesus you'll find yourself in a peaceful situation when you got some crazy children, got a crazy husband and crazy wife, you're going to have to learn to keep your mind on Jesus. That's why when you come in church, you can't come in here with crazy. You got to check crazy at the door. Leave crazy at the door and come in here and just lose your mind. Now, wait a minute, Reverend, you got me messed up now. I'm going to leave crazy at the door and come in here and lose my mind. That's what I said. That's what I meant. You got to come in here and just let it all go and give God the praise. Thank God for the crazy in your life. Thank God for all that you've been through, all that you're going through, and praise him anyhow. He, he played crazy. Uh -huh. I can hear David saying, I may be in a messed up situation. But I ain't going to let that stop me. I'm going to praise God. Anyhow, he recognized that his back was against the wall. Realized he hadn't, had nowhere to go. Even those that he trusted were trying to kill him. Despite all of that, he still recognized that God is a good God. Somehow, even in the midst of David's problem, he still found somehow to give God some praise. He found, found it easy to turn a bad situation into a good reason. 
give God some worship. I don't know what you're going through or who this is for this morning, but whatever it is you're going through, it's a good reason to give God some praise. You want to mess up your haters? Start praising God. You want to confuse your enemy? Start praising God. Because they're looking and waiting on you to fail because they already prophesied on you. Say, see there, I know they wasn't going far. I knew they wasn't going to mount to anything. But if you want to really mess them up and just mess up their mind and make them go crazy, just start praising God. Start worshiping God. You know why? Because the Bible says God inhabits the praise of his people. And whenever God comes into your space, he has a way of transforming things that are around you. Uh, David had some history with God. If you're going to praise him, you got to have some history. You got to have something you can reflect back on. He had history with God when it comes to troubles. And the history he had with God helped to mold and shape his attitude for praise it was the history he had he looked back over his humble beginnings and every now and then you ought to look back where you where you come from I know you got silk stockings on today and, and I know you got your fineries on today you riding good looking good you got your weave all tight fried dyed laid to the side weave tees and all that good stuff and I know you got your rouge and your makeup on but you ain't always had it like that wish I had some real people in here I'm talking about some real folk you hadn't always had it easy like this you've come up the hard way some of our young people today they don't know nothing about living without they've always had a silver spoon in their mouth have our witness in here. They don't know about getting no wood for the wood heater. The wood stove. Pot belly stove. Amen. Clothes smell like they come from a smoke cell. I wish somebody wanted to help me here. With all that firewood smell in your clothes. Y'all ain't gonna help me preach in here. Young folk don't know nothing about that, but those of us who went through that, we know we hadn't always had a full electric house. Turn on one switch and warm up the whole house. Some of us had to have them heaters, and we had to go stand by the heater. Had to go stand by. Don't get too close. Now, don't get your pajamas too close. <laughs> don't get your robe too close. But, and you get there and you sort of lift it up a little bit. <laughs> Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all been there. You know what I'm talking about. You ain't always live in a nice home you lived in. But you ought to look back and thank God for where you come from. And if it had not been for God's grace and God's mercy, where would you be? Amen. Amen. Brother Larry had me laughing yesterday. He got this thing in his cell phone about the BMW. This British guy calls in and he tells the lady, I got trouble with this new car I bought from y'all. He said it drives good in the daytime, but it don't work at night. He said I had a manual car and it worked good night and day. And the lady was nice. She said, sir, what's the problem with it? She said it drives good in the daytime, but it don't drive at all at night. She said, why? She said, someone with this gearbox. He said, the reason why when I put it in, in, D, in daytime it drives, but when I, at night when I put it in night, it don't move. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of jacked up, isn't it? So this car is it. I put it in, in, in night. It don't move. 
And then they said, my friend wanted to race me and I put it in R and it won't race. <laughs> Amen. You know, he didn't know nothing about no car. So all of us know what it is to have an hoopty. Amen. Some of us, not all of us, know what it is to have a hoopty. Uh, you don't know what a hoopty is? Okay, let me, let me tell you this way. A one-way car. It'll bring you there, but you got to carry it back, you know. <laughs> You know, always had been riding like you're riding and dressing like you're dressing. So David looked back over his life and thank God from where he come from. But not only that, he looked back when he had to deal with a lion and a bear. And a lion is tenacious. He's the ruler of the jungle. He dealt with him. God helped him to slay a lion and a bear. Oh, okay, let me say it another way. Uh, preacher's deacon was out hunting. <laughs> out hunting, and while they were out hunting, he was out there in the woods, and the preacher told the deacon, said, well, I'll tell you what, if you get behind a lion and a bear, they get behind, the bear get behind us. He said, I'm going to outrun you. He said, well, I don't know about that, real. You're going to have to make some steps. And he said, I don't know. He said, but you're going to stay and help Reb if he get in trouble. Huh? He said, well, i tell you what you do, Reb. If that bear catch you, you better pray that he's a Christian bear. <laughs> <laughs> and as they have it, that bear did get behind him, and they commenced running. The deacon outrun the Reverend. And that bear swat him down. He fell down, and the Reb laid down. They said, Lord, touch this bear, make him a Christian bear. <laughs> that bear put his hand together and said, Lord, thank you for the food we're about to eat. <laughs> that ain't part of the sermon. I just threw that in there. Sound like a good place to put it. <laughs> God has a many ways of dealing with the circumstances in our life. David was able to wrestle a lion and a bear. But not only that, but God had helped him when he had to face this big 10 foot giant, Gat Goliath. And he stood out there, come up against him with a slingshot and five smooth stones and took it and swung it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost and hit Goliath in his forehead. Walked up to him, took his own sword and cut his head off. He had some history of knowing how God will fight your battle. And every now and then I look back over my life. Every child of God ought to have what I call a faith file where it causes you to look back over your life and see where God has brought you from and what God has brought you through and how God has brought you out and brought you over, you ought to have a faith file. And knowing that if it had not been for God, on your side, where would you be? And it's because of this history that David had. Uh, that molded David's attitude from uh, could be to yes God can it moved him from might be to you better believe it it moved him from I hope until ain't God good and all of us ought to be in that place to know that God can do it all of us ought to be to that place where we know, as I preached yesterday, if anybody can do it, God can do it. All of us ought to be able to come to that place in life where we just believe that God is able to do it. Get to that place where we recognize that God is good and God is good all of the time. So the first point I'll tell you is praise begins when with our will. Verse 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth David's attitude reflects a determination to rejoice regardless of his situation even when people 
leave you when things fall apart? Will you continue to bless the Lord? We have a tendency to quote verses of the Bible, yet never really take time to think about what they really mean and how the words are truly uh, applicable to our lives. But when you read the word, you ought to have an understanding that the word speaks to your will. Uh, I guess one way I could explain it is uh, in a form of an illustration, I have to work on my posture. I don't always sit erect. All in school, teacher would always say, gone or set up straight. Always had an issue with slouching in my seat. And I can tell some of y'all got that same issue. Most of us have horrible posture. We even buy furniture that allow us to slouch around. Do I have what is in here? We don't even buy furniture that promotes proper posture. We find something that will allow us to slouch and get comfortable. We like to slouch rather than to sit up straight. But God challenged my thinking about this and God asked me the question, this question, what is your posture of praise? You, you see the thing about your posture if you learn to have correct posture when you stand up you'll stand up straight with confidence what's the hand of witness in here you won't be all bent over but you'll stand erect with proper posture the same thing goes for our posture in praise if you learn the right posture to praise God no matter what come in your life you can still stand with confidence and know that God is going to make a way somehow so David said I will bless the Lord at all times all times is not referring just to the beautiful days the rosy days the blooming days of our life but uh, is referencing to all times that no matter whether they are good or bad that includes times of brokenness can you praise God church when you are experiencing the brokenness of life can I tell you life sometimes hurts life hurts sometimes Yes, can you praise God in times when you are hurting? Can you praise God when everyone and everything seems to be going wrong or against you? Well, that's what all times means. You got to praise him when you're broken. You got to praise him when you're hurting. You got to praise him when everyone and everything is going against you. That's what all times really means. But let me take it a step further. At all times also include those times where you don't understand God. Why God is allowing certain things to happen in your life. I really wish I had some real people here now. I, I've been in those situations in my life that I couldn't understand why God allowed me. You know, all of us, we, we do think a little bit more of ourselves than what we ought to. That's something we go through, we feel like we didn't really deserve that. But you got to learn to praise him even when you don't understand why. Because there are some hurts in life. You don't always understand what God is up to. Here you are going to church 
on a regular basis here you are giving God the best of your service but instead you're going through a season of struggle it makes you wonder why me I just come to tell you just praise God anyhow even with that difficult child you got to learn how to praise God anyhow even with that difficult husband or wife you got to learn how to praise God anyhow you know every now and then God will let you experience a Job moment yeah I'm feeling my help now God let you experience a Job moment what you mean a Job moment if it ain't one thing it's another thing as soon as one servant finish his report talking about all your cattle are gone another one comes saying all of your children are gone if it ain't one thing it's another and then Job sat there uh -huh, the apple of his eye the darling of his heart sunrise sunset his beautiful loving wife with her diligence card and visa card in a pocket rolling in a Mercedes Benz BMW uh, with a meat coat on now all been repossessed I wish I had somebody real in here after she lost all of her luxuries she looked at Job and said look at you you got souls from the top of your head to the sole of your feet man you ought to just cuss God and die y'all ain't gonna help me preach in here that's a Job moment when you're going through some struggles of life and you're losing some thing that you don't, can't understand lost job, lost money lost houses, lost clothes lost loved ones you can't understand that's a Job moment but you know what Job did in his moment though he slay me yet will I trust him I wish I had somebody in here all the days of my appointed time what you gonna do I'm gonna wait until my change come why change it was a change that brought me in this situation it's gonna take a change to get me out of it anybody know God is able yeah God is an able God and he will make a way somehow if you're not ashamed yeah to help me preach now reach over and touch your neighbor say neighbor I've seen the lightning flashing I heard the thunder roll I felt sin breakers trying to conquer my soul but I call on Jesus and he worked it out tell him yeah 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 God praise him God praise him God praise him yeah it also includes times where you are taking a complete faith walk. Yeah. You feel like God is silent. During your time of testing, you are facing dishonesty all around you seem like even God has abandoned you can you praise him? have our witness sometime I think I said it before walking with God it ain't easy cause when you walk with him 
It takes faith to walk with God. If you don't mind, Julius, I want to just share this. Uh, conversation come up this morning. How it is that sometime your old friends who you left in the world, they'll try to entice you. Man, come on. It's Friday night. It's Saturday night. It's going to be on tonight. And you got some jingle in your pocket? Talk to me, somebody. I wish I had some party folk. My party folk didn't show up today, so they can't help me preach. But since you're not the party crowd, just use your imagination. Anybody ever been there before? Yeah. Where your old friends, they want to beckon you to come go with them, but you got to have the strength and the stamina to say no. Let, let, me, let me see if I can paint the picture a little bit. Uh, I like to watch football. And all time when they playing ball in inclement weather, especially when the wind is blowing, every team like to be on the end of the field where the wind is at their back. Because the wind, if you're throwing the ball with the wind, it sort of goes a little bit with the wind. And it's a little bit more accuracy where you want it to fall. But when you're playing and you're playing against the wind, the ball tend not to go where you want it to go. You missed it. See, when you change from going the way of the world, it's smooth sailing. But when you turn around and start going God's direction, now and then you find a traveler. It'll get a little lonely. Seem like you're all by yourself. But can I tell you, the race is not given to the swift. Y'all ain't helping me preach. The battle is not given to the strong, but the one that holds out and endures to the end. I wish I had somebody that was going to hold out and endure. Do I have a witness here? It includes times when you don't feel like praising him. Anybody ever come to church and didn't feel like opening your mouth? I hope Reb don't look at me today. I hope he don't ask me to raise my hand. I hope he don't tell me to wave my arm because I don't feel like it. Anybody ever just didn't feel like it? You've been through hell and high water this week. You woke up, as you say, on the wrong side of the bed. But you and I know if you got up on either side, it's the right side. If you woke up at all, it was God that woke you up this morning. And since you got up this morning, since you got your ups, and since you got your breakups, you ought to give God some praise because he's worthy of the praise. Worthy of all the praise in good times, in bad times. He's worthy. Have I got a witness? Praise not only ought to come from the will, but praise flows from our emotions. He says, my soul shall make a boast in the Lord. Do I have a witness there? David praised the Lord, not only because it was right, but because uh, he knows that God is good. We like David know that it's right to praise the Lord. Praise him because he is an alpha and omega God. Praise him because we know he is the creator. Praise him because we know God is Jehovah Jireh, which means he is the one that provides. Praise God because he is Jehovah Shammah, which means that God is the one that's always near. Praise him because he is Jehovah Rapha, which means he is the God that heals us. Praise him because he is the God Jehovah Nisi, which means he's the God that fights 
all of our battles. Anybody here know that God will fight your battle? Yes, he is the one that fights all of my battles. But I believe praise ought to go and spread to others. He says, the humble shall hear and rejoice. And he says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. In other words, we ought to have some company when we praise the Lord. I don't want to praise him by myself. I want somebody else to help me praise the Lord. I want somebody else to help me to lift up holy hands and give God the praise because the truth of the matter is God has been good. God not only has been good, but God is good. Not only God has been is, but he always will be good. And since that's the truth, I think I ought to solicit some help this morning to help me praise the Lord. If the Lord been good to you, you ought to praise the Lord. If the Lord made a way for you, you ought to help me praise the Lord. If the Lord been bread when you're hungry, you ought to help me to praise the Lord. If the Lord brought you from a mighty long way, you ought to help me to praise the Lord. If the Lord helped you to raise your children, you ought to praise the Lord. If the Lord healed your body, you ought to help me praise the Lord. If the Lord made a way out of no way, you ought to help me pray the Lord. If the Lord brought you out, brought you over, you ought to help me pray the Lord. So, oh, magnify the Lord with me. You ought to put some plurality in your praise because it's not just me, it's all of us. The Lord been good. And if God's been good, you ought to praise him because he's worthy. Praise him because he's good. Thank God for Calvary. Thank God for Calvary. Thank God for Calvary. What happened at Calvary? The Bible tells me when they whipped my lawn all night long, when they took my Jesus from judgment hall to judgment hall, he never said a mumbling word. He did it all for me and for you. Have I got a witness? I heard that they led him him up to Vine De La Rosa. They put a cross on his shoulder and as he was crawling and walking up to Vine De La Rosa, they had some men and they had some women and they were weeping and crying. He stopped long enough and said weep not for me but weep for yourselves. Do I have a witness? He was trying to let them know that trouble that's coming have I got a witness the Bible says the cross got so heavy and they made a man an Ethiopian man help Jesus to bear his cross do I have a witness and I heard the songwriter Dr. Watson must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free but I heard Somebody else said, no, there's a cross for everyone, and there is a cross for me. Have I got a witness? I heard he walked up to Val De La Rosa. I heard they left him wide. They nailed his hands to the cross. They riveted his feet to the cross. You know what they did, don't you? They lifted him up 
do I have a witness? I feel preaching now. They lifted him up. And when they lifted him up, they fulfilled the prophecy. Because I heard him saying, And I, if I would only be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men, white men, black men, red men, yellow men. I'll draw all men. What kind of men? Liars, homongers, homosexuals, lesbians. I'll draw all men under me. I need a praise check. Is it anybody here in Mount Calvary that's not ashamed to lift up his name? There's power in the name. There's joy in the name. There's healing in the name. There's hope in the name. There's joy in the name. There's deliverance in the name. Say yeah. Say yeah. 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 He died. Didn't he die? I said he died on Calvary. Yeah, he died until death died. He died until the sun refused to shine. He died to the centurion said, surely this must be the son of God. You know what he did, don't you? They took him down, put him in a tomb. Yes, Lord, they put a rock around the rock they put a rock in front of a rock they put a rock underneath of a rock they put the rock of ages inside of a rock do i have a witness he stayed there friday he stayed there friday night he stayed there saturday he stayed there saturday night but uh, i said uh, I'm through y'all. It was early. Sunday morning. Sunday morning was a praise report. Sunday morning was a hallelujah day. Sunday morning was shouting. Sunday morning was glorious. It's time to give God some praise. Have I got a witness? Is it anybody here that can praise God because he's alive? Anybody here that can praise God because he lives in your so is it anybody in here that know he's alive he got up he got up he got up with all power in his hand do i have a witness but i need power in my life i need power to walk right i need power to talk right i need power to live right i need power to give right i need power to worship right is it anybody here that's got that power anybody here know that power anybody here made up your mind I won't let nothing and nobody stop me from praising God. Let me ask you one more time. Do you know that you know if it had not been for the Lord on my side? Tell me where would I be? Could have been dead sleeping in my grave. But I heard, whoo, I heard. I heard the voice of Jesus telling me, final, say it, uh, say it, uh, oh, yeah, oh, 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 yeah, say it, uh, yeah, oh, yeah. 